fix programming um, natively, DirectX, OpenGL. I've also done a lot of data visualization and, and UX design. Um, Dave, you want to reintroduce yourself? Sure thing. I was on briefly earlier today with Adam Tuliper. Uh, I'm also a tele technical evangelist based out of Philadelphia. My background was in uh, web development and gaming. Previously, I was at Comcast working on their Xbox applications, and now I'm here joining these uh, wonderful folks at Unity and Microsoft to help uh, these products get off the ground. Great. So we are in Module 5, building for the Windows platform, using Unity to target Windows Store and Windows Phone. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to cover the stores. So there are two separate stores right now, Windows and Windows Phone. And we're going to talk about exporting your game to each one of these platforms. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the hardware, uh, what's involved, what kind of hardware you can target. And then we'll talk a little bit about platform-specific features uh, at the end mm -hmm. and how to make use of those. So let's delve into the stores. We have uh, a pretty vibrant ecosystem now. Yep. We've been working to expand this the past few years since we launched the platforms. Uh, we've got ha over half a million apps now um, across Windows and Windows Phone. Uh, we've got, at any given point in time, over 100 million active users. Uh, that's a great 250% year-over-year growth from last year. Uh, we've got developers joining the, the platforms uh, in droves. You know, 89% growth year over year from last year, over 640,000 now. And we've continued to grow our uh, MO partner billing uh, through, throughout the world. I mean, globally, with different countries in China, Europe. Uh, and that's very uh, important with the mobile operator building to, yes. to a attack those markets where uh, instruments for purchasing things are not really readily available. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to bring that up because uh, uh, a large issue that game developers commonly run into is they only seem to target the countries they're from. And uh, obviously Microsoft, we're here in America. So many developers, and I'm sure you see this as well, in your location, they tend to just focus on America. Yep. Like I said, China, Brazil, uh, a lot of third world countries are a huge target for uh, Microsoft at this point, especially with lower power devices. So as he, Jason gets deeper into the talk, um, consider that your game doesn't necessarily have to be the most beautiful or gorgeous thing in the world, but often considering a lot of those low power devices that are in uh, many of these emerging markets as well. Yeah, and, and talking about these emerging markets and instruments for billing, mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, credit cards are not really available to these people. Right. Uh, and so mobile operator billing is super important for them to be able to make in-app purchases uh, and buying games from the store. So let's talk uh, or go over some uh, real quick games that are out using Unity on our platforms. Uh, Drift Mania. We've got some pretty large, uh, big IPs who have used Unity uh, on our platform. Mm -hmm. Temple Run, that Frozen Freefall. Yep. My wife plays that like every day. <laughs> um, anyways, just to give you an idea of what the capabilities are on our platform, uh, there's some great games out there already. Thousands of games. Yeah, a lot of diversity with Unity. There. And yeah. easy for students or even professionals and AAAs to get on board at this point as well. Yep. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's try to understand the way that the app stores are broken down here. So we do have two stores right now. Yes. We've got the Windows Store, uh, and this applies to devices running Windows 8, Windows 8.1. That includes the Windows RT devices like right. the Surface RT tablet uh, and the, the Nokia 25, is it 2250 or 2520? Whatever, the Nokia RT tablet. Um, it also delves into the tablets, uh, all-in-ones, desktops, laptops that are running Windows 8 and uh, Windows 8.1. Okay, so we've got a pretty broad spectrum there then, right? Yeah, pretty much pretty much any PC or tablet running Windows 8 yeah. and above. Yes, yeah, so really, right? anything from... That's what the Windows Store, uh, that's how you're going to get your apps onto those platforms. Yeah, and definitely something to consider when you're starting to put a lot of this together, uh, whether you're going to have touch controls, um, game padding controls... Uh, because, like I said, people may be playing on, on a flight on a tablet or they may be at home in a, a huge desktop with a standalone GPU inside there. So really think about this as you're starting to put some of your products together, too. Yep. Now, the other store is the Windows Phone Store. You know, this is going to have a, a slightly different reach. It's targeting devices like the Nokia Lumia line, now, now Microsoft. Mm -hmm. HTC, they just launched their great flagship phone, the uh, HTC One M8. Yep. Uh, Huawei... Um, yeah, I mean, I use a 15, Samsung, 20, you use right? A 15, these are all 20. these emerging market phones that yeah. 
we don't necessarily see here in the United States. Um, operating system wise, Windows Phone 8, Windows Phone 8.1. Mm -hmm. um, the Windows Phone 8.1 is the new operating system update that's rolling out globally. Uh, I think the last I saw about 25% is there yes. uh, and the operators continue to push that out over the next few months. Uh, like, what do you think, maybe by the end of the year? We should see a, a, a large majority of the market on Windows. Yeah, probably more than fifty percent at that point. Yeah. And how about the revenue share? Why don't you yeah. discuss that? So for revenue us? share, uh, we have a seventy thirty split, which is standard across you know any app store that you deal with. So seventy percent to the developer, thirty percent to the store for platform fees, publishing fees, and uh, what have you. Yeah, not a bad cut at all, especially when you consider the number of developers you now have access to. So let's talk about the revenue models and uh, what, which ones we support on our platform. Uh, advertising, of course. We've got a multitude of advertising platforms available, which we'll cover in just a minute. Yep. In-app purchases are huge. Uh, if, while I'm going through these, if you'll pay attention to the bar chart on the right-hand side of revenue source, you can see uh, the trends and where we're at right now. And uh, this data is, is fairly recent as of July of this year. Um, in-app purchases are trending upwards in, in both markets. Yeah, absolutely. So phone, much more so now, uh, but Windows Store is also trending upward. And the paid model, the old paid model is trending downwards. Yeah, which is definitely like a stark contrast for what something like you and I may have grown up with, right? Yeah, sure as yeah a child, exactly. Right, we grew up going to the, the physical brick and mortar stores, buying a game for 50 yeah. and $60, and you expect that was gonna be the end of it all. Uh, but now you see it's actually going the, quite the opposite direction. We're in the 26% at the bottom of that bar chart there. Yeah, yeah so we're kind of but, like the... Yeah, I would uh, personally would much rather buy a game, but the market is trending towards in-app purchases. Uh, and these are, you know, consumables, uh, durable goods, right? Yep. So Even like a currency exchange. Yeah, so things like, uh, what is it, the frozen free-for-all. Mm -hmm. If you fail, you can buy a new turn in the game. Right. Right, in-app purchases like this. Uh, that this you know new generation of mobile users is, is keen on buying uh, yeah. to continue playing and enjoying a game. A lot of psychology behind that too. So it uh, made yeah. uh, before the, the developer to get into understanding the um, consumer's mindset and what would make them want to, in fact, go after an in-app purchase. Like kind of dangling that carrot in front of them. Yeah, I mean, there's again, we're not going to delve into the deeply uh, deep into it in this mm -hmm. session, but. There's a lot of research, a lot of information available on, on, on the internet about in-app purchases and how to model it uh, correctly. In fact, Tobiah and I are going to be doing a talk tomorrow Absolutely. Um, on this exact thing, monetization, how to do it the right way uh, to make money. Um, the other model is paid, right? This is the classic model. I go in, I purchase the game, I download it. Uh, we have different price tiers, 99 cents the minimum on both platforms. Mm -hmm. We have $1.29, $1.49, and it just kind of bumps up and up and up in increments like that. Uh, and I think the maximum might maybe $999. Yeah, right. Yeah, not bad deal at if all. You wanted, <laughs> if you want to do that. Full application suite or something like that. Yeah. Um, and one thing I do want to note is if you do choose the paid model for your game, please, please, please leverage the trial system uh, yes. that's a part of our store. And it's really, really easy to set up from the developer portal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can set up time trials. So I can say that my game's uh, trial is going to expire in one day. Uh, it's going to expire in three days. Right. It's up to you to decide what works for you. Uh, my guidance on that is usually if they can finish your game in less than a day, you know, don't give them a one-day full trial. Give them a trial with some limited functionality. Maybe they uh, get the first two levels of the game. Right, and then they need to purchase it. So that's another um, aspect of it that you need to consider. Um, trials do afford you a lot more upfront downloads. Yeah. So you know, people download your game, play it, decide if they want to purchase it, uh, as opposed to seeing you know some big price, hefty price tag on the front of it. Um, and you know, some of us may not think 99 cents is a hefty price tag, but a lot of people do. Uh, and there's no trial, they won't even bother to download and, and uh, take a look at your game. Exactly. And you know, something so. I wanted to point out about the, yep. the in-app purchases really quick. Uh, security is obviously always a big concern, and how do we deal with this monetization, how people are getting paid? Well, uh, Unity developers on Microsoft Platform always have the option of um, having Microsoft handle that, uh, that currency exchange. So people can have in-app purchases, it then goes through Microsoft system, and then at the end of the month or billing period, 
that money and those funds are then distributed back to you as the developer. So you don't have to worry about um, handling the money. The consumer doesn't have to worry about um, the security behind it because it's all handled by the same model that they use to actually purchase the game in the first place. Yep. And then, of course, the other model is free, right? You know, if, you, uh, if you're making your game and you don't feel like you need to monetize it, it's maybe a hobby, um, of course, you can always release it to the store for free. Um, and get feedback. In fact, I know some developers that do this as a kind of a beta testing yeah. for a game concept. They'll just release a free, free version and they say, hey, does this work or not? If it does, then they take that concept and they, they refine it into a, a monetized product later on. Mm -hmm. So now we have free down. Why don't we discuss a bit about advertising and additional yeah. ways to make revenue? So advertising, um, we have support from several platforms, right? We've got some pretty major ones on here. I think Mobile-wise, AdMob is a pretty big one. Um, the Microsoft ads. Mm -hmm. uh, ad Duplex is a really cool one. It's an ad exchange platform that's specific to Windows, Windows Phone. Okay. And uh, what they do there is they, they exchange advertising between apps, and you can also purchase ads for your apps on that. Ah, perfect. So... And if there is anything that, that you notice is missing here that you'd like to see on the platform, please, we implore you to reach out to the tech evangelists so we can then go back to the product groups and work on getting these uh, built into your apps uh, Plugin-wise, you know, you guys have probably heard about the Prime 31 plugins already. If not, they are free to download. Uh, Prime 31 is a, one of the major providers of Unity plugins. Uh, we, we made a deal with them earlier this year to make all of the Windows platform plugins free. Um, and, and that's uh, including the Microsoft ads, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, just not the ad mob. Right. But the, the platform plugins, uh, interacting with the store, Live tiles and then Microsoft ads. Yeah, and uh, Azure as well. Um, Adam and I will yeah, be giving uh, a, yep. a talk on Prime 31, how to integrate their Azure plugin uh, tomorrow at about 2 o'clock. So be sure to come back for that as well. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to mention on this slide is Ad Rotator uh, is a cool little device that, that lets you plug in all these different ad platforms and you can feed it some parameters. It'll actually cycle through uh, different ad providers in the same space in your application in the same control or in your game. So you can actually start sourcing out for different ad platforms for better fill rates, uh, better mm -hmm. click-through pricing, right, that stuff. And it kind of maximizes your, your impressions. Um, and I'm sure that I think Tobias is going to cover this more in depth tomorrow. But yeah, uh, let's see what's on that. So why don't you talk a bit about in-app purchases and, and uh, best practices about that without getting too deep, because like you said, we'll leave Tobias to do that tomorrow. So the, you know, we, we, I guess we could talk about the support on the platform yeah. for in-app purchasing. Consumables, durable items, things yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, it's all managed through our developer portal. Um, you know, you sign in, and you go submit your application, your game. You, uh, you have the opportunity to set up your merchandising for your game. And you can choose these products, like these consumable items. These are the items that users can purchase over and over again repeatedly. So it'd be like in-game currency, uh, more lives, health potions, what have you. Um, and then the, the long-term durable stuff would be something like unlocking a new level in the game um, going forward. And uh, you can set that to expire. So it'd be almost like a, maybe you could do a subscription with it. Yep. And yeah, you have anything to add to that? Or? Uh, yeah, so uh, Atlee Hunter, who's a prominent Windows Phone and Windows 8 developer, he has several hundred apps on the platform. Uh, he actually gave a really good talk about this and at Philadelphia Code Camp several months ago. And I'm sure he has a, another good blog post about it. Again, it's Atlee Hunter. And uh, he spoke in depth about consumables, the psychology behind it, and best practices, and how despite not having an incredibly large user base for one of his games, he still managed to make a very good living off of it just through repeat engagements, um, fair practices, um, and, and really intelligent ways of getting consumers to take advantage of consumables um, in a way that feels fair to both sides. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, again, here's the in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to mention also that you could use any third-party um, commerce system that you want. It doesn't have to be the Microsoft Developer Portal commerce system. Uh, so if you're using some kind of game service back in to yeah. provide your in-app purchases, you can do that. That's certainly um, uh, we're capable of, of supporting. Yep. Uh, and one other important note, uh, if you do have a trial version of your application, it does not support in-app purchases. So 
it would have to be a full-blown either free download or a purchased uh, or paid version of your game. Okay. okay. So then we have the two stores. How do we kind of merge or combine our products okay. in both That's stores? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, we did introduce this new concept back, I believe we announced it at Build this year. 